Welcome to this video in which we'll do an example of mesh analysis where the circuit has pretty much everything that makes mess or that could make mesh analysis hard. Um, this is the sort of circuit that uh, uh, electrical uh, course instructors sit awake at night and dream up and laugh evilly about. So here it is, you can see it. Uh, you'll notice that we've got uh, an independent voltage source, which is not a problem. We have two dependent voltage sources, which are not that big of a deal, and we have a dependent current source, which is a little more of a deal. So, without further ado, let's actually get started. The first thing to do is to identify the meshes in the circuit. So, um, I have a mesh up here on top, and I'll call that mesh number one. I have another mesh over here. I'll call this mesh 2. A mesh over here. I'll call this mesh 3. A mesh here. We'll call this mesh 4. So this is a circuit that has four meshes. So we'll have to have four unknowns and we'll get four equations in these four unknowns. So that wasn't bad. Let's go on to step two in which we assign mesh currents. So we'll assign mesh current one to be like this. And we'll call it I1. We'll assign mesh current two to be like this and call it I2. We'll assign mesh current three to be like this and call it I3 and we'll assign a mesh current 4. Where's a nice color? Oh, we'll do it in brown. Okay, we'll assign mesh current 4 to be like this and call it I4. You'll notice I've made all the mesh currents uh, go clockwise. Again, this makes things a little easier. Okay, so that actually completes step two. Step three is to look at all the meshes and, um, or look at each of the meshes in turn, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around them and get equations and unknowns. Now, when you encounter a dependent voltage source, for example, or a dependent current source, you just go ahead and include it in the equation and then you have to take either the controlling voltage or the controlling current and express that in the mesh currents and plug that back in. So even though it might look a little intimidating, it's really not that bad. Okay, so let's begin by finding an expression for mesh one. So we have starting here, um, we have I1, going through the 50 ohm resistor, so we'll have I1 times 50 ohms, plus uh, we have I1 going this way through the resistor, I4 going this way through the resistor, and we're coming at it from uh, right to left, so we'll have um, 40 ohms uh, times I1 minus I4, then we have I1 going this direction through the 30 ohm resistor and I3 going this direction. So we'll have plus 30 ohms I1 minus I3. And we haven't encountered any voltage sources, so this is all equal to zero. We can simplify this a little bit to get that I1 times 50 ohms plus 40 ohms, plus, oops, what am I doing? I'm getting so excited to be done. Plus 30 ohms minus uh, I3 times 30 ohms minus I4 times 40 ohms is equal to zero. Okay, so this represents our first equation. We got this 
by going around uh, mesh one. Okay, and so the next thing we'll do is uh, look at mesh two. Okay, so if we look at mesh two, we have basically um, we have a little bit of an issue because you'll notice that uh, this independent or I'm sorry, dependent current source is connected between mesh 2 and mesh 3. So we will not be able to um, just do uh, KVL around mesh 2 and KVL around mesh 3. We're going to have to do a super mesh. Isn't that exciting? So if we look at uh, this point 1 or, or this uh, dependent current source, uh, we have um, I2 going this direction. We have I3 going this direction. So we can say then that I3 minus I2 is 0 0.01 times V sub B. Okay, so V sub B is a voltage. Looks like it's over here that is controlling this current source. And eventually we'll need to have V sub B expressed in terms of um, our mesh currents I1, I2, I3, and I4. So why don't we just do that right now? You can see that VB we have I1 going this direction, I4 going this direction. So VB is going to be um, 40 ohms times I1 minus I4. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation as I3 minus I2 is equal to 0 0.01 times 40, which will be 0.4 I1 minus I4. Okay, so this is kind of exciting. We actually have an equation in which every uh, mesh current shows up, which is a fairly unusual situation. Again, this is the sort of circuit that evil professors stay awake at night to dream up. Not, of course, that you've ever met any evil professors. Okay, so um, that's one equation that we can get uh, from uh, this current source. The next thing we need to do is a super mesh around the current source. So the super mesh is going to include um, mesh 2 and 3. And then all we have to do is go around the super mesh applying Kirchhoff's voltage law, and we'll be um, we'll have our second equation from the super mesh. So let's see if we can uh, clear out some space. I guess we'll just clear off all of this, and hopefully we'll be able to remember what it is when we go to plug it all into the solver. Okay, so going around the mesh. I'm sorry, the super mesh. Let's start here. So we have the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor would be I2 times 20 ohms. The voltage across the 30 ohm resistor, well, we have I3 going this direction and I1 going this direction, so we'll have 30 ohms. Uh, let's see, I3 minus I1. We go through the 80 volt source and we're going plus to minus, so we have plus 80 volts. Now we go along the bottom, there's nothing down here. Now we go through the controlled source and we're going minus to plus, so this will be minus 5 IA. And this is equal to zero. Okay, that wasn't so bad, was it? 
Now, we look at IA, it's up here, and we notice that it is just the negative of I1, because I1 is the mesh current going this way, IA we've drawn going the opposite direction. So that tells us then that IA is minus I1. So we can uh, simplify things a little bit. We can write then that I1 times 5 minus 30. So I'm basically getting from here an I1 and this I1 times this 30 plus I2 times 20 plus I3 times 30 and this should have ohms on it. Turns out the units for this source are also ohms. And then this is equal to minus 80 volts. Okay, so let's see if we've got this right. We have Let's see, we had I1 times 5 minus 30, I2 20, okay, I think that looks okay, certainly hope it does, It'd be a terrible sadness if it isn't, actually there's a good chance most of you will never know. Okay. So that gives us the two equations that we needed from our supermesh, the one given to us by the current source, by this current source, and the other by going around the supermesh. So the last thing we need to do is go around mesh 4. Okay, so we start here, and we go plus to negative. Uh, we have a point 4 VC. Then we go all the way around here to this source. We've got uh, negative to plus. So we have minus 80 volts. And then uh, we have I4 going this direction, I1 going this direction through the 40 ohm resistor. So we have 40 ohms I4 minus I1. And this is equal to zero. Okay, so to simplify this a little bit, um, we notice that V sub C is up here, and it's the voltage across this 50 ohm resistor, which means that, um, and we've got it labeled plus to minus, so V sub C will be minus 50 ohms times I1. And we can plug that in down here, and we get then that um, we have 0.4 times minus 50 ohms times I1 minus 80 volts plus 40 ohms I4 minus I1. And this is equal to zero. Well, I can, um, let's clear off some stuff here. And we can rearrange things a little bit, tidy them up, and get, uh, let's see, I1 times 40 minus uh, 0.4 times negative 50 would be 20, plus 40 I4, and this is equal to 80 volts. Okay, so we're close to being done. We now have our four equations and four unknowns, but unfortunately I'm completely out of time, so you'll have to wait until the next video to see how it all works out. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm sure you'll want to come back and see the end of this one.